Hey there, welcome to mini clips number two and we're going to be sculpting a purse today, a miniature purse, which is something that I know a lot of people are really interested in figuring out how we do it. So here we go. First thing you do is you pour your batter, no matter what batter it is, into a brownie pan for your cake batter. Um, you can pour your cake batter into anything, loaf pans, um, brownie pans, sheet cake pans, cupcake pans without liners, um, anything that you can pour your batter into can make a fabulous mini cake. So to make the purse, this is what we do. We pour our batter into this and we bake it. Once it comes out, it looks like this. What I've done is once it's cooled, I wrap it and I chill it just so it's firm enough for me to carve. Um, and then I work off a template. A lot of the designs that we do are from a template and I make them myself. I draw them out so they're to scale and they fit like a certain size um, mini cake, whether it's a one to two serving or three to four. Um, I, I just draw it accordingly. So I drew out a purse design and I'm gonna use this kind of as my guide. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is take your cake and you're gonna cut it in half right down the middle or somewhat middle. Doesn't really matter. I never cut anything right down the middle. All right. Then you take some buttercream and you're going to make this into layering. Everything we do is basically the same as you would do with a big cake, only we do everything on a smaller scale. So it's pretty easy to do. I don't really need to cover the whole thing either because I'm not really going to be using all of it. Just as long as the middle is covered, which is what I'm going to kind of be working off of. Okay, so then I take my piece and I put it on like the, like so. If it's not even, that's okay because you can fix it later. Um, so then what I do is I take a look at what the cake looks like and I take my template and I kind of use that as my guide when I'm cutting. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a piece of the cake, which I know I don't want my purse to be ultra thick, so I'm going to just cut away a piece of the, of the cake that we're not going to need. Now you don't need to throw this out, you could totally use this for something else. Um, okay, so then what you would do is you would take your knife and just use it as a guide, and you would carve down, oh, I've never done it this way, so it's kind of weird, um, why don't I come around that way. So I take it and I use, there is my guide. And I just slice down the cake. As you can see, the cake's not frozen, but it's a little firm, firm enough for me to make these cuts that I want to make. And if you cut on an angle, it's no big deal because we're going to go back and we're going to fine tune it later. This is simply the guide. And then I'm going to do this side as well. Okay. So we have a somewhat version of a cake purse um, and what we're going to do from here is we're going to shape it so it's symmetrical on both sides and it's exactly the way I want it. So I just start shaping it down and what I like to do is I like to have the base a little bit a little bit thicker than the top. That gives the cake some um, stability. Also I don't want my cake to be that thick either so I'm going to angle it down, cut away what I don't need. You just have to be unafraid to cut the cake because if you cut a piece that doesn't work you can always fix it or you can just simply change your design a little bit like say oh i was gonna make one with a handle but now i think it's gonna be a clutch and no one will know which is the fabulous part and i do that all the time and a lot of people say okay when you're gonna make a design go in with a game plan when i get an order for a design and it's not very specific. They give me the colors and just the design. What I like to do is um, I just go on a whim. I don't plan. And a lot of people do plan, they sketch, they do, you know, they, they do their sketches and everything. I don't. Um, if I'm given carte blanche for the design, then I just kind of start it. And then things start to kind of come naturally together. And usually for the good. If it goes for the bad, I just start over. And we don't tell them. Okay. Okay. 
One thing I really like to do is to make sure um, to give the purse a more realistic look is I like to cut an angle in this way so the cake doesn't go straight flat to the to the board or to your to your um, your dish. You want it to curve in a little bit and that's going to give the purse a little bit more dimension. After you're done with this, then what I do is I take a piece of parchment paper like this and I place it on top and this is what I work from. This is my this is my work surface. Okay, now that you have your cake sculpted, you move it to a surface that you're going to be working on different than what you carved. When it comes to crumbs and everything like that, you want to carve in one place and then do the rest of the work in another because crumbs will get into your fondant and it just makes for a big hot mess. Um, now we're going to crumb coat. Um, and for those of you guys who don't know what crumb coating is, um, you're just going to apply a layer of buttercream to your cake. You can use different kinds of, as far as the recipes for the cake is concerned. Uh, a lot of people do use a pound cake because it's really firm. Obviously an angel cake, angel food cake would be a disaster to try to carve, but um, you can even do this with a box cake mix. <clears throat> so all of you out there that are fretting because they have no idea how to make a cake from scratch and you don't have time, that's okay. You can still use, you can use a box mix and it's, it's all good. Just make sure you chill it though, because then that will give you a little bit of uh, firmness to the cake. Just applying my crumb coat. I always do the top last. Why? Well, if you do the top first, what are you going to hold on to? Dirt. <laughs> no offense, that dirt actually was to me. Because I, I first, when I started this, I would ice the top. And I'm sure as I'm looking down at my mini cake and I'm doing my crumb coat, you have a great view of how dark my roots are. I'm desperately in need. Color and cut. And you women can completely empathize with me, I'm sure. Okay. So I'm taking white fondant right now. I prefer to use satinized fondant. I know a lot of people have their personal preferences. You want to make your own, be my guest. I choose not to. Um, satin ice is just fine for me. Okay, so I've kind of worked it so it's it's uh, hopefully a little bit warmed up and easy to work with. And then I roll it out. Now you're probably used to using massive rollers for big cakes, but because we do little things, I don't need a, a massive roller to do it. And what I want to do is I just want to roll it out. If you have a bubble, what do you do? Just kind Check of pop it. Out. it. Just ignore it. Maybe it'll go away. Probably won't. Then I have a case you have to deal with it. So you pop it. Okay. How thin do you roll it? Obviously not too thin. Because if you roll it too thin, then you can see the the bumps of the buttercream. After I've done that, I take my hands and I place it over the cake like this. Now this is totally personal. People are probably thinking, wait a minute, you don't use your roller. No, I don't use my roller to get the fondant covering it. We're dealing with such a small area that you can do it with your hands. And all I'm doing is kind of using my hands, this part, and smoothing it over. Now they have those cake smoothers. For mini cakes, that comes in really handy. Um, if you have any bumps, you can certainly use a, um, a cake smoother to get them out. So far, it's looking okay. Okay. So I'm just running my finger underneath. Don't be so quick to cut it. You want to make sure it's how you want it. I like to do this too. And then I flatten it. Or you can use a cake smoother and flatten it that way. You're cutting it kind of on a 45 degree angle there. And then that won't happen. Now if you mess up the bottom, it doesn't matter either because you can always put a border or a strip around the bottom.